chapter eight, and we're starting to introduce this idea of a parametric equation. So a parametric equation, sorry, there's the chapter seven. Parametric equation uh, is something, and I'll take the same example they've given us in the book, uh, x equals two t, y equals t squared, for example. Okay, so instead of having y and x related, what I've got is x is related to t and y is related to t. So I've got three different letters involved. <coughs> and the way to think about this is if you've got some sort of curve, I'm, this curve is nothing to do with this curve, by the way, I'm just drawing any old curve here. So here, what I could do is I could tell you um, y as a function of x. In other words, I take the x coordinate here and I put it through this algebraic expression and it spits out a different number. So, so you input x values and we get out y values. You take the x value and you make it into a distance. You take the y value and you make it into a distance. And that's how the x and the y are related. Okay, and you do that for every point on the curve. So that's what we're doing when we're plotting y as a function of x. Okay. Now, <clears throat> here's another way of doing it. Is we have a third letter, which I'll call t. And t can take different values. Uh, but I tell you how to calculate x by saying, well, take your value t and put it through a function. And then I'll tell you how to calculate y by giving you another function of t. So g of t, say. Okay. So I give you t. From t, you can work out x and you can work out y. And then those you plot on your axes is your x and y. Okay. So that's what a parametric equation is. Another way of saying that, uh, the way that I like it, is imagine instead of it being an x and a y value that are related, there's a t value as well. So in other words, at every point on the curve, you could sort of attach a little price tag to it and say, well, this is the point where t equals, I don't know, t equals 5. And then a little bit later on the curve, you can attach another little sort of price tag and you put sort of t equals 6. So imagine, you know, this is a, if it's on a computer screen, you could kind of click on it. And at any point, it would tell you the t value. Um, so as you move along the curve, the t value changes as well. Now, when you first see this, the obvious question is, well, fine, but why? why? Why on earth are we doing this? We've got a perfectly good way of defining curves. Well, there's a few reasons. There's a few places that these things happen to be useful. Um, and let me just give you one reason, first of all, uh, which is that there are some curves where if you have a Cartesian equation, that is y linked to x, the... It, it, it's it's not easy, right? It's a difficult equation to write. Uh, it's not easy to deal with. The algebra is complicated. But if you write the same thing as a parametric equation, you can have quite a simple expression for it. Okay. So some things are just easier expressed like this. It's, it's clearer what they're doing. So there, there's one sort of quick, um, quick example, just as just as a quick answer to the question why would we want to do this. There are lots of answers, um, and we'll see some of the applications as we move on. But for now, um, some equations are simpler if we write them as parametric instead of as Cartesian. OK, so that's the idea. We've got this parametric equation. Another way of thinking about it would be um, think about this as sort of some other variable that you want to measure along this curve. So you have a curve like this. Maybe this is the temperature. So we, we often use T. Um, I like to think of it as sort of T for temperature. So, so you have a position on the curve which has got an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. But also I'm saying that every point on the curve is a different temperature. And maybe as I move along the curve here, we, the temperature heats up. So T starts at a low value and gets higher as I move. Um, and, you know, there's, there's another thing that we want to measure. Or maybe it's the colour, right? T is the, is the colour and it moves along the spectrum from red to blue. Um, and depending on the, on the frequency of light of the colour, that is our T value. So there's something else. There's an extra bit of information about the curve that we want to sort of label as well. And that's that's what I, that's the bit of information that our t value carries. Okay, so a couple of different ways to think about it. If you're not happy with that, if it seems a bit nasty and confusing, for now my advice would be don't worry about it. Let's start doing the examples. And by the time you get to the end of this chapter and the end of the parametric differentiation on chapter nine, if you're still not sure what these things are for, then uh, go and find your maths teacher and or, or find somebody that, that's seen them before and say, well, OK, now I know how to do all these things. I still don't see what the point of it is. And, and hopefully uh, you'll be able to get a bit of a better answer once you know what some of the applications are. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, almost annoyingly, is we're going to say, well, now we've got this new way of writing something like this. We're going to uh, think about going back into Cartesian. Form. So in, in other words, if I know x in terms of t, if I know y in terms of t, then let's get rid of t and write y in terms of x. Now, 
in some cases that they've picked, that's going to be easy to do. As I've said, sometimes when you try and do that, you get a sort of impossible in, in, um, impression, sorry, expression for y in terms of x. So sometimes this will be easy, sometimes this will be really fiddly. So in this case, though, if you think about it, what we're trying to do is eliminate x. So I'm just going to treat these as simultaneous equations. x over 2 equals t. And that comes from equation 1. Um, sorry, equation 1. And then if I sub that into equation 2, I get that y equals x over 2 all squared. So y equals x squared over 4. Okay, so that one is probably an example of it's, it's, you know, this is much more familiar than this. So for the moment, we want to have that in its Cartesian form. And then from its Cartesian form, I can state the domain and range, can't I? Because I know that this looks like this. I know it's a, it's a uh, parabolic curve. Um, it's a transformation of the y equals x squared curve, isn't it? It's just a stretch of y equals x squared. Um, so I know that the range is going to be positive values of y and the domain is going to be four values of x. Perhaps we could have seen that here, right? The range, What if t can be all, uh, sorry, if, if um, I'm just looking at the question again, t isn't all values, is it? t goes from minus 3 to 3. So if t goes from minus 3 to 3, the lowest value x can be is minus 6, the highest value x can be is 6. So the domain is values of x between minus 6 and 6. Uh, the y values are, well, t goes from minus 3 to 3, so y goes from 0 up to 9, doesn't it? And remember, the range is the y values, the domain is the x values. So the domain of this is that, the, the range of this is that. Now we can see that from the Cartesian sketch, or we can see it from the parametric sketch as well, okay? Um, And example two is just the same principle exactly, really. Take these two equations and eliminate the t. So in this case, they've rearranged x, uh, the, the, the equation in x to get t on its own, substitute that into y, and the whole thing turns into this equation here. Um, write down the range of f of x. Well, the range of f of x isn't that easy to see in this case, but if I take uh, the values of t and think about the y values, then it's much easier to see from that. So working out the range of f of x from the Cartesian equation is difficult. Working out the range of f of x from the parametric equations is easy enough because we just say, well, when t equals minus 2, then y takes the value of a third. And we know that as t increases, y decreases. So y takes the values between 0 and a third. And those are my range values for this function. So I now know there's the first use, actually, of the Cartesian equations that we've had. I have this Cartesian equation, sorry, if I have this Cartesian equation, because it has this parametric form, I can find the range of this equation without having to uh, do any harder work, really. Okay, that's the end of 8.1.